Reading got it here in 5.7. Uh, again, bringing back that idea, positive correlation, right? Negative correlation, no correlation. So again, with respect to scatter plots. So your first example, you have to make a scatter plot and describe its correlation. So plot these points, right? X and Y, right? X and Y. Plot them, 0, 59, 59.2. So again, plot these, right? Each of these points. When it's overall, it's a negative correlation. What does that mean? It means as the altitude, notice, increases, that's the X. The temperature decreases, that's the Y. So in other words, you go higher in a plane, it's colder outside. Uh, kind of a no-brainer, right? We've seen movies, people up on top of mountains, how cold it is. So um, again, negative correlation. Now, does this make a line? No. But you could use a computer to find the line of best fit, or you yourself could take a ruler and just kind of uh, draw a draw a really good line of fit, a good trend line. Overall, again, this one's negative correlation going down. On this one, you're asked to make a scatter plot um, and talk about the uh, what it shows. So I've got that example here for us. So again, you had to uh, plug and chug rather here, or rather just graph. I'm sorry. So uh, we start here with ten dollars, right? Uh, dollars spent and uh, two point five. Eleven dollars, two point eight. Nine dollars, two point three. So these are random points; they're not in any specific order. But when I graph them, I get four, one point one, right? We get uh, five, one point three. That's that dot right there. Uh, and then keep going again as we go overall here. Now, again, I know these are in random order, but once you plot them, you can see that overall there's a positive correlation. That means the more dollars you spend, the more gas you get. Um, duh, right? So on these, you're going to need to um, label the graph, label the axes, plot the points. So consider the population of a city and the number of letters in the name of the city. Would you expect a positive correlation, a negative correlation, or no correlation? Um, um, I would expect to have no correlation. I don't think the number of letters in the city has anything to do with the number of people there. Like, you know, if you named a city uh, super califragilistic expialidocious, if I could actually even say that, there'd be like a billion people there, right? Yeah, no, has nothing to do with it at all. So no correlation. You have stuff all over the place. Okay, so writing an equation of a trend line. So again, you've got some points here. You're plotting. These are in order at least, right? So this is the weight of a panda uh, versus its age, right? So at w year one, it's 2.5. Year two, 7.6, so on and so forth. And we go ahead and we graph those, right? So there's that one, 2.5, two, 7.6, so on and so forth. And we're done. You just take a ruler. I wish I could show you that on here. Lay it across and draw a line that so it sort of goes through the middle-ish of them. And then you take that line and you pick two points on there, two points on the actual line, or two points on yours that it kind of hits, right? Like maybe this one and this one. And you use that to calculate the slope. And they took the points 4, 7.1, that one, because it's right on the line, right? And 8, 37.9, also right on the line. And they calculated the slope. We all know how to do that. Formula for slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. You get the slope of 5.2. Now, we look for that, uh, that y-intercept, right? Where is it going to cross the y-axis? Well, technically, it's going to cross at a negative point, but you don't have negative weight, but it's still. Uh, and again, we know how to calculate that, too. Plug in those two points. Um, throw your M on there, uh, use slope, uh, point slope form rather, or slope intercept form, solve for that B, that'll give you that B right there. Yeah, slope intercept form, that's the right form. Now, now that we, again, these are things that I expect that you know how to do because we've done them before. Uh, we can use that to make some predictions. So if we take a look down here at the bottom, and bring that up here to you, uh, estimate, the, uh, estimate the weight of a seven-month-old panda. So you throw that age in, right? for that X, and we find out oh, about 32.7. Now, is that true, I'm wondering? So if we look here, uh, if we think that the seven-month-old seven, year, seven month old panda, I guess this is by months, not, not years, I'm sorry. By months, seven, is that going to land at about 32.7? Well, let's see. Six, seven. Let's see. Let me grab. There we go. Six, seven. And that looks like it's about, let's see, oh, between 24 and 36. Yeah, that's got to be, yeah, it's got to be about right. So that's a pretty good prediction, um, again, according to our line here. Again, not the line of best fit, but a really good line of fit. Now, make a scatter plot of the data below, draw a trend line, and write its equation. What is the approximate body length of a seven-month-old panda? 
So again, plotting these again. And we still have, whoops, let me grab that here. We have this lovely, lovely graph of that. Again, one, right? And we get uh, point eight, or, uh, yeah, 8. 2, we get 11.7, so on and so forth. You plot them. Obviously, part of positive correlation, right? The older a panda gets, the heavier it gets. It seems to make sense, right? They probably eat. Anyway, so you draw a line, and draw a line that hits two good points along here, okay? This one actually hits three points, four points. You can use any of those. I don't know which ones you chose, but calculate the slope. Again, the formula y equals mx plus b. I expect that you know how to do that. And then we use that slope to go ahead and write the actual line. And again, the formula for that then, once we have that slope, there we go. Once we have that slope, so we would have calculated the slope in this case uh, as 2.23, you know, about that, two and a quarter-ish. I don't know which two you picked. But again, so we'll use the formula uh, y, so we'll pick one of our, so y equals mx plus b. Pick one of our y's. It doesn't really matter which one. Um, you know, maybe that, uh, the three, uh, 15.5, so, so 15.5 equals um, that m times... 3 plus b, and again, our m we came up with is 2.23, and hang on, that doesn't look very good, does it? Let's write that in a little better. 2.23, all that times 3, um, plus b, and solve for the b, right? We all know how to do that. You had a lot of practice. That was the last section, and we come up with, um, then, I guess it's the b then, uh, here is going to be that 8.8 uh, that .8 down here. And again, plug it in, right? It wants to know about uh, a uh, seven-month-old panda. Plug that in, and we solve. We get about 24.4. Uh, and then the second question, do you think you can use a model to extrapolate the body length of a three-year-old panda? Well, I suppose that's considered an adult panda, so it might grow at a different rate, so no, maybe. I mean, you can count up the months and see if that does it, but um, I'll bet you it doesn't grow at the same rate as an adult does. Our adult probably levels off, right? Babies grow real fast and they kind of slow down uh, once they reach that adult stage, so. Okay, so now we've practiced finding a good line, right? I just want to talk about line of best fit. You're going to skip number 11 in your homework that asks you to do this. I just want to talk about it, though. So college tuition here. So you've got a bunch of, whoops, there we go. You've got a uh, bunch of points, and you graph them. Uh, if you want to, but, uh, you know, and come with a line of good fit. That's that's the way we've been doing it. But if you actually plug these into a graphing calculator with all these lovely stuff, that if, uh, formulas and stuff, programs they have in them, it can actually punch out a line for you of best fit. And once we know that line of best fit, which they've got right here, we can actually use that then to make predictions. And that's what a line of best fit really does for us. It's an idea where things are going to go. So now we come back to the line of best fit idea. And again, here's the... Uh, Here's the equation we came up with in the, they came up with in the last one using their calculators. Predict the cost of attending 2016-2017, right? So we have to uh, plug in here, right, the year. So plug in the year right here, so where that X is, right? Um, and, you know, run the numbers, right? You're going to get 9,964. 9, now the big question is here, what does the slope tell us uh, about the rate of change? Slope tells you that the cost increases at a rate of about 403, uh, 409.4, <laughs> I can't say it, $409.43 per year. There we go. That's better. I finally got it out. Um, so that's what the slope's telling in this case. So you can expect every year it's going to go up by $409.43, about that, right? Because, again, it's an estimate. It's a line of best fit. Now here's one of my favorite parts of this. Identifying whether relationships are causal. So in, in other words, they cause each other, right? In the following situation, is there likely to be a correlation? If so, is the correlation reflect a causal relationship? But correlation means they're related, right? And we talked about positive and negative correlation. Causal means one causes the other. So let's talk about that. So the number of loaves of bread baked and the amount of flour used. Uh, that's certainly going to be a positive correlation when you graph it. In fact, one would argue that that's uh, causal um, because, you know, the more, uh, more that you bake, right, you're going to need more flour. Right, so that's a really strong correlation. Definitely causal because, again, I don't know how you're baking it without flour. <clears throat> number of mailboxes and number of firefighters in a city. There's likely to be a positive correlation here, all right? More mailboxes means more houses. More houses means no need more firefighters to protect people. Again, because both of the number of mailboxes and number of firefighters tend to increase as the population increases. However, installing more mailboxes will not cause 
more firefighters. So he's like picked a random street and put like 100 extra mailboxes. That's not going to cause more firefighters. Not causal, but again, definitely a strong correlation. Now, the got it here in the following situations. Is there likely to be, again, correlation? If so, is it causal? Cost of family's vacation the size of their house. Well, there's definitely a uh, definitely probably a correlation, right? Uh, if you have a bigger house, you probably have more money. If you have more money, you probably go on nicer vacations. So it's definitely positive. But um, having going on bigger vacations, spending more vacation, is going to make your house get bigger. Um, in fact, maybe you spent too much. I don't know. Time spent exercising, a number of calories burned. Well, definitely positive, right? More exercise, more calories. That is causal because that's what your body does. It burns calories as you exercise. You are causing that to happen.